Hi, my name is uh, Richard Frost. I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Windsor. The following is a demonstration of uh, speech web architecture and applications. This video has been created using T Captivate software running on a regular PC. Speech web consists of a set of hyperlinked speech applications. The speech browser is an X plus V script, which is executed by the Opera browser with an IBM speech recognition plugin. We've also built a browser, speech browser runs on an Android tablet using the Google uh, speech recognizer. At the end of the demo, I'll explain how to download the appropriate version of Opera, configure it, and then use it to access our applications. Most of the applications that I'm going to demonstrate were written by undergraduate computer science students at the University of Windsor. The natural language processor was written by myself from with help from graduate students. So to begin with, we just go to the Opera browser that I previously loaded. It's configured for speech. I go to our public domain speech web. This site contains links to some example speech web applications. You can also go to the menu pages of SWAC and MCS through this page. Please say, go to, followed by the name of the application you want to talk to or say, help for more information. We'll begin with a simple program that was written and deployed on the internet in less than an hour. Go to Monty. Okay, here is Monty. Hi, I am Monty. I know a joke. Where do you live? I hang out in one of Frosty's computers. How old are you? 18 or 19, but I am not sure if that is years or days. I'm not going to ask uh, Monty to tell his joke because it's pretty bad. Um, but this was a simple program just written as a script, uh, canned answers, how old are you, it comes back with that answer. The next application is a little more um, complex, but it was written uh, by a first-year student at the end of his first year. So I'll go back to the main, to the bookmarks, and I'll pick this one. This is Pete. Pete is a program that will answer questions about the periodic table. Yeah. What is the atomic number of zinc? Sorry, I didn't know what. What is the atomic number of carbon? Carbon's atomic number is six. List the metals. The metals are actinium, aluminum, americium, barium, berkelium, beryllium, bismuth, thorium, cadmium, calcium, now what we'll do? cerium, we'll cesium, go Chromium, cobalt, to another application. Dysprosium, it Welcome to Voice Tic Tac Toe. Say start to start this game or help for more information. Uh, this application was written by a second year student. Um, it demonstrates uh, the integration of um, a little bit of graphics with speech. So I'll ask it to start. Start. The computer has made the first move. The computer has put a piece on the bottom right position. Top left. You have put a piece on the top left position. The computer has put a piece on the bottom left position. Please make a move. I'm going to get beaten. <laughs> bottom. You have put a piece on the bottom position. The computer has put a piece on the center position. Please make a move. Oh, maybe it's going to be a cat's game. Um, Top right. You have put a piece on the top right position. The computer has put a piece on the top position. Please make a move. Hi, I am a speech interface to Wikipedia. Please type in the name of the article you wish to explore. Uh, we don't yet have an interface that allows us to um, uh, give the starting word, uh, spell it out, and because there's so many words in Wikipedia, our speech recognizer is likely to get it wrong. So at the moment, uh, we start off by typing it in. So I'm going to retrieve the page for Obama. I am a speech interface to the Wikipedia article, Obama. Please say, what can I say for a list? What can I say? You can say, Read the paragraph with a title, followed by a title. Read paragraph, followed by the number of the paragraph. Go to. What are the titles? The headings are Early Life and Career, Presidential Campaign. Read Early Life and Career. 
Obama was born on August 4, 1961, at copy question mark Kalani Maternity Gynecological Hospital, now copy question mark Kalani Medical Center for Women and Children, in Honolulu, Hawaii, at... What are the links? The links are, listen, Illinois, Honolulu, Hawaii, Russia, Indonesia. Go to Honolulu. Redirecting to Honolulu. I am a speech interface to the Wikipedia article Honolulu. Please say, what can I say, for a list of accepted inputs or say, help, for more information. So what's happened here is we uh, had the Wikipedia entry for Obama. We could ask what are the headings and read paragraphs from those headings. Um, very simple parser that uh, was written for that. That could be easily made more sophisticated to read sentences containing certain words or to extract some information. Um, but what happened, we also asked what are the links, and it went through the Wikipedia page and found the wiki links to other Wikipedia articles, and we asked then to go to the Honolulu page, so we are there, and now I can ask for Honolulu, what are the headings? What are the headings? The headings are history, geography, government, diplomatic missions, neighborhoods and districts, demographics, economy, transportation, cultural institutions, media, tourist attractions, notable residents, education. Hi, I am Solar Man. So what I did there is I uh, just went to another application. We could have stayed with Wikipedia for quite a while, moving from Honolulu to other pages and browsing. Um, we're hoping that uh, we'll, in the next few years, two or three years, uh, we'll be able to apply natural language processing techniques uh, to extract data from the wiki pages and put it into a database. Uh, this example we have here, Solomon, is a, uh, an interface, natural language interface to a database, and I'll explain a little bit about uh, what's going on behind the scenes. So I'll begin by just asking what Solomon knows. What do you know? Not much, I am afraid. I am just beginning to learn. I know a bit about the planets, the moons, and the people who discovered them. My master will teach me some more when he gets another grant. Now, the data is held in a typical relational database. If I ask a question um, such as, does Mars spin? Yes. The way that it uh, answered that is that um, it paused it, it recognizes Mars as being a um, proper noun and spin as being an intransitive verb. And it converted those two words, translated them into uh, mathematical terms in the lambda calculus. So these are really functions. And these functions are defined in terms of some of the data in the relational database. Um, what happens here is Mars doesn't just denote an entity, so this is not, uh, the answer to this was not calculated by checking to see if the Mars entity was in the unary uh, relation containing the set of things that, that spin. A little bit more complicated, Mars is a function that is applied to the set and returns the value true if the entity Mars is in that set. Now this seems a little uh, convoluted, I don't want to go into any great detail about this. But let me give you another example. Does every moon spin? Yes. It's a bit too close to the microphone there. Um, the way this worked is it uh, got the set of things that are moons, the set of things that are spin, and then did a set inclusion test. So the word every is a function. Now, what we've done is we've built up a set of functions for the different words. They're applied to each other. And so this really truly does understand the question, if it recognizes it. So let me try a couple more. How many moons were discovered by Hall? Two. Which moons were discovered by Hall? Phobos and Amos. Now this is a little bit more complicated. The word discover is translated into a very complex mathematical function. Um, and again, I won't go into the details. If you're interested in this, you could go to my um, website, the University of Windsor, or if you just type in um, Richard Frost in Google Scholar, you'll find some of the uh, access to some of the papers that we've written explaining how we do our natural language processing. So um, I've given you some examples of applications um, that are 
ind individually uh, placed on different servers on the web. I just want to show you something else now. I'm at Solarman now, but if I wanted to talk to Monty, because the Solarman program knows about Monty, I can ask to talk to Monty. Can I talk to Monty? Yes. Here he is. Hi, I am Monty. I know a joke. Now, what happened here is the uh, program, um, Solomon program, when it was asked, can I talk to Monty, instead of returning an answer that would then be spoken out, it returned a, a hyperlink to, a, to the Monty application that could reside on any server anywhere. So this is uh, analogous to the use of links in regular web pages. And basically, I can go back if I want. Can I go to Solomon? Okay. Here is Solar Man. Hi, I am Solar Man. So what we can do is build up a set of uh, speech applications and link them together. Now these applications that I've shown you are just uh, prototypes. What we're really trying to do is make it very easy for people to access these applications, speech applications and also to build them. And I'll explain a little bit, first of all, about how you go about accessing these applications. So suppose you don't have uh, the Opera browser, then you can use any browser to go to the speech web project. So here's our speech web project. So if you just type in my speech web, it's www.myspeechweb.org, then what you can do is if you go down here and you haven't got the Opera browser, you click here to download the particular Opera browser that is required for our to run our speech browser. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really um, supported anymore, so we're looking for an alternative, and one of the things we've done, as I mentioned earlier, was to build our own uh, browser for uh, Androids that uses the um, Google Speech recognizer. However, it's a little bit different. The Google Speech Recognizer is a, a dictation system, recognizes a uh, massive number of words, um, but for questions to databases, um, you don't get the accuracy that you might need yet, and so we're using what's called a, a grammar-based speech recognition system, and we're at the moment uh, looking at alternatives to the use of Opera um, that looking at uh, standalone VXML interpreters that would give us that uh, capability. So once you've got the Opera browser, so here you've downloaded the Opera browser, you then go to Tools, and it's explained in our web page what to do. You go to Preferences, you go to Advanced, you go to Voice, and then you just click this. This would have been unclicked. When you click this, it will ask you, do you want to uh, download the IBM speech plugin? You say yes. Once you've done that, you then have your Opera browser ready to um, access our speech applications. Um, if you go to this site here, you can go and just look at some newer applications. This is under construction, this one, the older speech web. Here it tells you what to do again, tells you how to download the Opera browser. And here we have example speech web applicants created by the speech web project. First time use, if you want to uh, get a little bit more detail, get the source of this. We'll see that this is an XML script and it's got some little bit of uh, copyrights open source. Um, and it tells you what you need to change. You change a couple of things. I won't go into it in any great detail, but you change the path name to where your executable program is, and it has to be have the extension .cgi. It has to be a CGI uh, compatible executable, and you also give the path name to where the grammar is going to be. So you explain where your grammar is. And then you change the greeting as well, so you, you can change this site contains links. So you only, all you do is change those three things in our script, and then in addition to that, you can also add into the file one grammar file with the extension JSGF. And you can have a look at some grammar files to see what they look like. So let's go to Monty to see, because Monty is very easy. Go to Monty. Okay, here is Monty. Hi, I am Monty. I know a joke. So, we've got the XML file here, but I'm just going to change this extension 
So JSGF, the extension at the end. And just click it twice. This is the uh, grammar file. It's very simple. It's got a little bit of um, uh, notation you need at the top. But here is the, uh, the grammar. Simple grammar. You just list all the things that you can say. What can I say? What do you know? Hello, hello there, thanks, how are you? And so on. You can also... Uh, this is kind of Bacchus Nauer form. You can have more complicated. So this is go to application. What is the application this? So this means a, a link could be go to Monty, go to Judy, go to please is optional. That's what these mean. So this, anyone who knows a little bit about uh, context-free grammars, Bacchus Nauer notation, it's very easy to write the grammar file. And then the only other thing is you need a program. And on the standard input for the program, the read uh, on a program, whatever the program is, um, when it, it reads this, it responds. And whatever text it responds will be sent back by, uh, to our uh, browser script and then will be uh, it turned into synthesized voice. Uh, there's a lot more information on building applications. Once you've built the application, to actually deploy it takes a few minutes by downloading our XML script, modifying it slightly, creating a grammar file. You've already written the program in whatever programming language you want to use for your application. And then you just make sure that all of those three files are in a web-accessible um, database. Thank you.